The term handcrafted gets thrown around a lot these days. It's become a movement, a trend, that can obscure the passionate folks who actually make amazing things by hand. Their remarkable stories need to be told, and I'm going to find them. I'm Anthony Bourdain, and this is Raw Craft. While there's some debate over how long humans have been wearing shoes, it's certainly been thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. Shoes are fundamental. They connect us to the earth. Until relatively recently, they were always made by hand, designed to fit our strangely shaped feet and constructed to last a lifetime. So on a planet drowning in cheap, disposable sneakers, it is something of a miracle to walk into the legendary Willie's Shoe Shop and meet Raul Ojeda and his band of merry cobblers. How are you? Good to meet you. And like any good guest, I came bearing gifts. They need a little loving. They need a little love, not too much, but enough. I actually shoot in some countries just so that I could wear these things without yeah. irony. Right, you exactly, know? exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure you don't do any cleaning or waterproofing no, or anything like I that. I kind of love them as they yeah. are. I don't want them to look too pretty. Yeah, no, this is that They should look of... like me, you know, old and butt ugly. As I think you know already, um, I'm looking for a pair of uh, disreputable looking uh, Chelsea boots. Yeah, has that been a boot that you've wanted to get for a long time? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it was early exposure to, you know, 60s era yeah, Keith Richards. Totally. Our number one client is someone who cannot find comfortable shoe. Someone right. who is always tired with their feet or there's always something. That, that's me, though. I mean, my, my feet are like a mess. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, they're like dinosaur feet, you know. This is Willie's Shoe Service. This is definitely this is the Willie's place. Shoe Service. Yeah, we've been in business since the 50s. That's Willie. That's Willie. That's me and him. I, I owe him a lot. The principles of shoemaking. Where is he now? Uh, Willie has officially retired. He lives in Mexico City. Soon to be 99 years old. Damn. Willie was a legend in Hollywood, providing shoes for everyone from Moses to Captain Kirk. You know, I, I have a morbid pathological fear of clown shoes. I mean, really, seriously, itself? I mean, they freak me out. Like, who, who ordered these? Okay, so these shoes were made back in the 70s by Willie. Willie was the maker of the first original Ronald McDonald shoes. Um, we... The dude I mean, had some really... messed up feet, I tell you. That's why clowns are actually angry. Having faced my fear of clown shoes, I was eager to get back to the more important task at hand, my brown suede Chelsea's. As you know, we've been working on your boots for a few weeks now. Um, they're ready. Awesome. They're ready for you to get them. I, I think you're going to love them. But before we show them to you, how about we just go through the process of what it takes to make that shoe? All right. Yeah? Don't think you can just walk into Willie's and leave with a pair of shoes. It takes Raul and his team two to three months to make a single pair. So we started this process a while ago with a series of very precise measurements of my feet. Raul and Sal start by making a wooden last based on my measurements and foot anatomy. It's the most important piece in shoemaking and determines the shape and fit of my boots. Would you write your name on the last? Why, with pleasure. Just in the bottom there? William Shatner. <laughs> He's good in everything. Leather comes in flat shapes, right? So it's our goal to mold shapes Right. in order for them to better fit this solid 3D form. I get it. So you get a true sort of tracing of 2D laid over 3D. Correct. Now, this is suede. This is suede. What animal does suede come from? Is, does this occur naturally? Is there some creature wandering around out in the wilderness that ready to soft, go? velvety. Soft and velvety? I mean, you just knock it over the head and you got yourself suede? It, it's actually shaving off the really thin layer of the skin. Right. Right? And then you end up with Just that nice, split. soft, mm -hmm. comfortable, supple. Mm-hmm. So look at this. This is cowhide. Really beautiful weight, and from here is where we get to cut all the pieces. I don't know whether you know this, but in the French tradition, uh, old school French guys, like the insult that they would use to yell at other cooks if they didn't like their work, said, what are you, a shoemaker? Do you, yeah. No way. Like, yeah, yeah. A shoemaker was like the ultimate insult for a, for a culinary. Huh. Oh, no, no, I think it's ignorance, because look, most cooks I ever worked with uh, are incapable of this kind of precision, and certainly anything this lasting. 
So I don't know where that came from. I'm gonna start using that. What are you, a cook? What are you? <laughs> so I wanted to show you the, the crimping process. These are lasting pliers, and notice how they look a little bit like a bird's beak. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to anchor down. Right. We hold it. And then without having to change tools, we know we're going to whack. When I first started in this trade, I made the decision that I didn't want to get into electronics or computer systems. I also think that after the apocalypse comes, we can make shoes, we can get up and make shoes, and that will be part of our contribution. Right. So when the power grid fails, and zombies walk the earth, I'll still be able to... Uh, you can still send me quality send a footwear. pigeon. Excellent. Send a pigeon with a message. This is my skiving knife. It's usually sit at a curvature. Hold it flat on a flat surface. It's like cutting Nova Scotia salmon. In this particular shoe, there's just a few seams that join together. This sewing machine dates back to the 20s. It's so old that you could go almost halfway in one start and all of a sudden go at 100 miles per hour. So I hold it here because I don't want right. to get me going. This is the way that takes longer right. that no one wants to do because it's unnecessary. Really good. Wow, this is gonna be badass. Next comes Victor, who deals with the complex and more rugged construction of the footbed, the welting, the sole, and the heel. Basically, he handcrafts everything that supports you down to the millimeter. We found him already at work, tearing apart my old cowboy boots. Note how the fit on these cowboy boots may be different than the fit that we have with the boots that we've made for you. Okay. You went through the whole sole in this case. Wow. Compare it with your walking pattern. This mm. is the shape of your foot. This is what we've taken. This is the new shape of the boot that we're made. And if we see, mm -hmm. that's exactly where your toe is. Right. So the balance that we are giving you with the boot hopefully will help for your toe to not dig in as much when right. you're walking. This is where we go next, and this is where we start to do the welting. Right. Our welting goes all the way around, mm -hmm. doesn't end, and this is where we start to get stitched right. into the footbed. So from this point, we go on to just putting the leather sole on. It is, without exaggeration, the best leather in the world for this stuff. So the wear on the leather, it's definitely much longer than most commercial soles. Right. Your knife has to be really sharp but have to know how to angle it correctly. It's bulletproof almost, yet you cut it with the knife. Wow. As we start to define the shape of the sole, then you realize that now it's time to come and start also adding and building up on the last of the heel, so we have our stacks of leather. Oh, it looks nice from here. Yeah. The next step from here would be to lock the heel, continue to let the, the shoe cure so that we can take it off, properly nail it, and then finish it and just polish the edges and basically the shoe is completed. So Anthony, took your measurements, we walk through the process of pattern drafting, upper assembly, lasting, soling. So now, let's just open the box and see what we have in there. Oh yeah, it's gonna be nice. Look at those. Oh, they're beautiful. Let's put them on and see what happens. I'm sleeping with these things. Shoes have always given my dinosaur feet trouble, but I kid you not. Oh yeah. After an hour in Raul's shoes, I felt graceful and grounded. Yeah, I feel stable, like all the parts of my feet. Ah, oh, it's like jamming my foot in a cloud. Couldn't be happier. You're happy? I'm really happy. I think that I can light up another candle to the saint of the shoemakers. I think these are going to age really, really nice. Oh, definitely. These are, we're going to become uh, old friends. Definitely. Yeah.
How long have you been in the business from the very beginning? I've been in the shoe business 16, 17 years now. I first started when I was 18 shining shoes. Where? In Century City. After three years, we had four shoe shine stations. We then started to take shoes to be repaired mm -hmm. and shop them in different shoe repair shops. And one day I just landed at Willie's. So I learned that it was a shoemaking shop and I got so interested. So yeah. you were doing pretty well at the point you arrived at Willie's? Yes. You, you were doing well. I was, I was. You go in and you say, look, I really love this thing and I want to, I want to do it. I want to do it. So the question is, why? The challenge of making a shoe at that level was what inspired me so much. And also the fact that Willie was so open to let me in and learn and evolve. How many shoes can you make a year right now under the current system? Oh, we couldn't produce more than 30 pairs of shoes. 30 pairs of shoes. Well, I'm sure you know how to make 100 pairs of shoes. Definitely. Or 300. Yeah. Most people wouldn't know the difference, no. probably. Mm-hmm, that's right. But I'm guessing you, you, you know. I'm in my 30s now. When I'm in my 60s, mm -hmm. I want to continue to do that, and I want to pass on that trade the same way that it was passed on to me. Are you in touch with other craftspeople? Oh, or? I do travel to seek different makers of different sources, and we continue to hit that same state of mind. In different ways, but in very similar approaches, we have fallen in love with something that we think that we can hone correctly. The shoemaking craft, I wanted to continue to be of that same origin. Hand tools, I, want, I love bragging about the fact that we can make a shoe without the use of electricity at all. We could seriously make a shoe with no equipment whatsoever, just some hand tools. Or are we ramming a needle through, uh, through leather without a, without you a machine? It. You poke it first and then just grab the needle through it. You poke it, not me, man. Anyway, keep doing what you're doing, making beautiful things. Thank you. Thanks for the Absolutely. hard work. Wear them well. Wear them well. Wear